First, let us start the faculty development program with the blessings of Almighty. I now call upon Zahar Khan, 30th CIC, to recite the craft. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahi Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Al-Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka In the name of Allah, most gracious and most merciful, all praises for Allah, Lord of the worlds, the most gracious and most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those who upon you have bestowed favor, not who those incurred your anger, not those who, who are destroyed astray. Sadhguru Mahalaisam. Sirarum vadana menatigal paratha kandamidil Tikkanamum madisirandha dravidanal tirunadum Takkasiru piranudarum daritanarum tiragamume Atiraga vasane porani tulagum minbamura and good morning to all present here. Uh, it's a great privilege to welcome you all for this two days faculty development program in com uh, quantum computing. And uh, first and foremost, I would welcome our chief guest uh, who's here to grace the occasion. And uh, he's done a lot of research in quantum computing right from the time he was doing his PhD. And it is really an honor to have you here. He's from, uh, he's uh, Arish Prichai, Senior Associate, PwC Bangalore, India. And uh, it's it's really like while talking to him in the morning, he was saying teaching is his passion. You, it's it's really an honor that you are here with us, and hope we have more interactions with you. Thank you for being here, sir. And uh, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome our inspiring leader, the man who spreads positivity through his beautiful smile, our registrar, our doctor, Dr. Raja Hussain, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Whenever we come for, for any any program or event like this, you've never said no. And uh, whenever we come to your office with a lot of stress, I do not know how you manage your stress levels. There's always a beautiful smile in you. And uh, many people don't listen. And our registrar is a very good listener, you know. He keeps listening to all our problems and he says, yes, don't worry, we'll sort it out. And that's it. You know, you, you, you get settled down. Thank you so much for being with us today, sir. And uh, min, uh, the next is our Pro Vice Chan uh, Chancellor, Dr. Tajuddin, sir. Many times we don't appreciate what we have, right? Uh, something that is very uh, great or precious when we have it within with us we don't really appreciate the uh, importance of it and such is one thing sir is a very vivid researcher he is he's done a lot of publications and he's got a wide knowledge and he still stays humble in all these situations i do not know we achieve one small thing uh, we get airs and i do not know how he stays so humble thank you so much sir for, for we have good inspirational leaders with us I hope you all also become good leaders in future. And next, I would like to welcome all the participants from our university and from uh, other institutions. I would like to welcome uh, our uh, deans, HODs who are uh, here to grace the function. And I would also welcome the students who are uh, really interested in attending this workshop. And uh, I would co like to congratulate the coordinators, Dr. Arun Raj, Arput Ratna ma'am, Sharon and Syed Abdul Syed for making this event happen. And uh, special mention of our uh, 
advisor, Dr. Murugesan, because he initiated, he said this is the current area of research. You are going to do some workshop in this area so that all our faculty knows what it is. And don't do it only for our university faculty, let everyone else benefit. Uh, I would like to uh, thank him for initiating this workshop. And I wish you all have a pleasant two weeks learning experience in our university. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to welcome our Honorable Registrar to give some valuable address, to give some valuable address regarding this FTP. The most honorable pro-white chancellor of our esteemed institution, Dr. Tajuddin, the chief guest of this uh, two weeks faculty development program, inaugural function, Dr. Aris Pichai, senior associate from PwC, concern from Bangalore, the dynamic uh, head of the department, a person uh, involving very, not only in the academic arena, involving various uh, extracurricular extension activities, so on, so on. Uh, she is none other than our Dr. Aisha. And uh, the program coordinators, Mr. Arun Raj, Dr. Arun Raj, Dr. Arpudaratna, Dr. Sharon, and my dear deans, faculties, guests from other institutions, my dear students. It gives me an immense pleasure to associate with this August gathering. This uh, faculty development program organized by our uh, computer science department particularly the topic, which is uh, uh, what uh, rightly said by our uh, another department, Dr. Aisha, it's the need of the hour. Particularly the teaching faculty should know the quantum computing. The recent days, uh, the scientists, everybody is uh, talk about uh, the quantum computing. So even uh, before coming here, as an ordinary lab man, I am, although I am a professor of management commerce, but I am not much uh, aware of uh, about uh, the quantum computing. A matter of uh, discussion with our chief guest, I can able to understand in a simple term, it is also the another version of computing, computer. So the, uh, with the use of the atom. This is the uh, recent trend uh, but everybody should know in the field of teaching. So our uh, head of the department, Dr. Aisha, not only organizing this uh, two weeks uh, faculty development program for the benefit of the faculties and students, but also bringing the right person who is qualified, who is uh, knowing better things. I think Arish Pichai, from his uh, uh, PhD onwards, I started the topic itself, quantum computing is studied, research topic itself. So, uh, such a great person is invited here for this inaugural session. Really, it's a wonderful, appreciable action taken by the computer science department. So, on behalf of the Crescent Institute of Science and Technology, we welcome you all, welcome our chief guest for this wonderful inauguration. Really, his uh, valuable inputs, his uh, uh, resourceful uh, ideas, everything useful for this uh, the inaugural session. So I appreciate, I congratulate, I felicitate on this IPS occasion. Likewise, uh, our uh, uh, head of the department, Aisha, rightly pointed out what are the things which is needed for the faculty. We the uh, Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, myself, uh, uh, we are ready to uh, do things uh, for the benefit of the students' community, for the benefit of the faculties and non-teaching staff. We are all uh, one family. The Crescent uh, 
in all cities functioning like that. So whatever the things uh, for the benefit of the institute, definitely we are ready to adhere, ready to uh, do things in a better way. So uh, once again, I uh, with this uh, the two weeks FDB program going to be a successful program, useful program for the career development of the faculties, students. Really, it is a, a, a remarkable uh, a program organized by this uh, computer science department. Uh, once again, I thank the uh, another department, all the coordinators, organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to each and every one of you. Ane welcome you to Anbana Varakangal. At the outset, I thank the organizers for giving this opportunity to stand before you to share some of my views uh, in front of uh, the August audience. Today <coughs> marks the beginning of an exciting journey into the world of recent trends in quantum computing. I extend a warm welcome to distinguished chief guest, Dr. Aris Pichai, senior associate, PwC, PwC Bangalore. You are really honored by your presence here, and then definitely I hope we are going to imbibe a new knowledge on quantum computing from user. Also, I also going to get some new knowledge because uh, I am a microbiology scientist. I don't know anything about the quantum computing. And also, uh, we are expert in utilizing the computer-based uh, technologies, computer-based, uh, you know, uh, experimental results, designs, everything we are using. But we don't know the algorithms, all those things, uh, because it is not needed for us. So we are the uh, uh, consumers for uh, uh, using this uh, computer, computer-based uh, uh, assist assistance. I also extend the heartfelt appreciation to our uh, one of the pillars of uh, this Crescent Institute of Science and Technology, Dr. Rajiv Jain sir, Registrar. As uh, he says, he is he's always in a uh, smiling face. Uh, whenever I enter his room, when I saw his uh, smiling face, uh, all my stress gone away. So such a wonderful person, I am I, uh, gradually becoming fan to him. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Sarmila Shankar, Dean of School of Computer and Information and Mathematical Science, Dr. Aisha Gono, Head of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, uh, has been instrumental in making this uh, uh, two weeks uh, uh, faculty development program. I really appreciate uh, them for uh, arranging this one. Uh, and a special mention and thanks to our coordinators, uh, Dr. Arpudar Ratna, Dr. Sayyid Abdul Sayyid, Dr. Arun Raj, Dr. Saran Priya for their tireless dedication and efforts in organizing this event. Uh, let us start understanding the computer what computing, quantum computing, computing is. The quantum computing uses the incredible rules of quantum mechanics to process and store information in a tiny bits called qubits. These qubits are immensely powerful and can perform tasks more faster than bits or computer chips in regular computers. Uh, actually, whenever we are doing any kind of experiment in case of biological uh, mode, uh, we need the computer. In addition to this, uh, the basic and fundamental requirement for utilizing any computer-based program is uh, basic data. So we cannot uh, sacrifice or cannot ignore the basic data, whatever data we have. The data should be very perfect data, accurate data and uh, true data. Then only this kind of quantum computing is useful. If you are giving the false data, definitely you are getting different uh, uh, type of uh, results which are not, uh, we are not uh, going to use this one. For example, uh, you know, uh, the uh, DNA sequencing. So I did some DNA sequencing in US laboratories. And uh, DNA sequencing is what, not just four letter, uh, letters, uh, RD9, bond, in time, and citation. And if you see the sequence, only ATGC like that. But 
uh, whatever we sequence, we have to deposit in the gene bank on, called the NCBL. Then we cut and paste our sequences and send it the sequence to the NCBL. The NCBL having so many uh, lakhs and lakhs of sequences, it compare and match what is uh, our sequence are matching with the existing sequence. Then we can get the results of uh, nearly our sequence is 99% uh, uh, homology with the particular species. We can proclaim that this is the species. Just for example, I just without having any sequences, just sit in the computer, just type the alphabets A, T, G, C, whatever I think. Uh, I just type the, all the A, T, G, C, G, C, A, T, A, T, T, D like that. Uh, I type it and send it to the NCBI. Then definitely these sequences get some uh, species homology. 80% species homology with some chlorococcus. So it is wrong thing. So whatever we are giving the true data, then only it is utilized and then we can get the good data. So, uh, before going to all the uh, advanced techniques, uh, we don't uh, sacrifice, don't eliminate or don't, uh, you know, uh, underestimate the basic data. For this, uh, uh, you know, the identification of organism is essential. What are the experiment we are going to do? This is also essential. So without naming the organism, you are not you going to insert the data in the computers, uh, quantum computing. So we have to give the name of the organism and whatever the data we want, we are having, you have to give the data, then only the uh, computing, uh, quantum computing give the correct results and indicate that this species name. So that is basic uh, understanding is needed. So for this, uh, this quantum computing is necessary and also the optimization process. So if you treat the cancer by using the radiotherapy, if uh, the dosage is heavier, dosage of radiotherapy, then in addition to the cancer cells, the normal surrounding vegetative cells are also damaged. For this, uh, you have to give the optimal dosage. The optimal dosage is uh, just like, you know, uh, standard optimal dosage will not be useful for you man to man. For example, if you see the diabetics, uh, diabetics uh, people uh, tell uh, doctors telling that 90 and 110, 110. The 90, 110 is uh, specific for uh, you know child, school going boy, adults uh, and uh, elder older people like me. So everything is uh, the same data. So even if you see the uh, fingerprint, this is different from each other. Likewise, metabolism is also different from each other. Okay, so we not, we need not standardize. Uh, the data, the optimized data of 90, 110, it is not possible, it is not good. So it is only the, you know, the, pharma, the pharmacy mafia, they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, asking us to uh, buy the drugs of uh, meta, metaformin and so many other uh, things, uh, uh, insisting us to purchase. So they are the millionaires. So to, you know, optimize the data of each and every age, age group, we have to use so many uh, data of individuals, particular individuals, and then analyze it physically, and, uh, you know, classical computers and bioinformatics tools are available, so we can assess this one. But the positive point of the uh, quantum computing is the optimization process with uh, thousands of variables of particular individuals it analyzed in a very lightening speed, we can get the results. So this is the accurate research. It optimizes the dosage for particular individual, as well as the duration of the exposure of the radiotherapy, everything is depends. So this optimal com uh, this computing, uh, quantum computing is another uh, uh, milestone uh, to get uh, the exact dosage and the exact treatment, uh, all those things, it is possible. It is 100% success because uh, the metabolism of each, each and every individual is different from each other. So by this way, this is a very important uh, discovery. And uh, now we are, we, we are talking about the age of the stone, age of the atom, age of the sea. Now we are moving towards the age of the quantum computing. So this is the need of the hour. Uh, and uh, uh, almost I said all the positive points of uh, quantum computing and uh, we have to see very seriously on the ethical issues. So ethical issues must be discussed uh, very elaborately because without ethics uh, we can't move for any advanced technologies. So for example, uh, you know, bioinformatics tools and uh, the mobile phones, everything is available in a very free of cost. But uh, it's got the wrong people. Some people hacking our accounts, they are uh, using, it is illegal things are going on. Likewise, uh, the quantum com computing system, if go to the bad people, definitely they are misusing. So that is uh, again uh, uh, a danger to our human being. So this ethical issues should also be discussed 
in uh, in this new area of uh, quantum computing because uh, you know we are facing uh, anything advancement comes uh, definitely some bad people enter in and then uh, use misuse it and then it is against our human welfare. So for this, uh, I uh, request the chief guest to, in addition to telling the all the positive points of uh, uh, quantum computing, so so he has to discuss. Uh, what are the shortcomings, so what are the negative points, how to secure the quantum computing if it reaches to the bad people, these are the things that are badly needed. So with this I really thank the organizers as well as our registrar, the head of the department for giving this wonderful opportunity. I thank the participants, I am very happy that I am also very sure that you are going to get some positive points and the good knowledge from our chief guest of this today's function. Thank you, thank you one and all. Thank you sir. Now I request our Honorable Registrar and Pro Vice Chancellor to give shawl and momentum for our chief guest Dr. Arish Pichan. Now, I would like to call upon Dr. X. Akpada Ratna ma'am to introduce our chief guest. Good morning. It is a honor to have our chief guest, Dr. R.S.P. Chai, here today, who is a true leader and an inspiration to many. He is an experienced researcher with a demonstrated history of working in a higher education industry. He completed his Bachelor of Computer Application at Madurai Kamaraj University and his Master's and Doctorate in National Institute of Technology, Trichy. He was an Associate Consultant in Atos Global IT Solutions and Associate Data Scientist Entropic Technologies in uh, Quantum Research Development Section, Paris and Pune. He also has a teaching experience as an Associate Professor in Christ University, Bangalore. Currently, he is working as a senior associate in Price Water House Cooper in Quantum Research Development Section, Bangalore. And he has completed various projects in the field of quantum computing. And some of them are quantum computing neural networks, quantum learning machine, multiphysics simulation, and experimenting with a quantum generic solution for optimization problem. And he has published more than 10 papers in reputed journals with high impact factor. He organized and delivered lectures in many FDPs, workshops in quantum computing. I feel incredibly privileged and honored to have you as our chief guest, sir. Thank you. We are very happy to welcome our chief guest, Dr. R. S. Pichai, to deliver keynote address regarding this quantum computing. I'm happy to see a variety of audience here. Uh, Wherever I used to deliver my lectures, there will be a set of CS students or some places I used to see physics students. But today Arun sir said uh, we have all department uh, people here. So first of all, I thank uh, the management for giving this opportunity and uh, Arun Rod sir for contacting me and uh, uh, making this happen. Um, then I would like to thank both teaching and non-teaching faculties who are behind this uh, efforts. And thank you all for showing your interest in learning this uh, such a emerging area. I started my PhD in uh, 2012 uh, in quantum computing. At that time, there there were very uh, few number of people who were aware of quantum computing in 2012, 2012. So people were so uh, skeptic when I said I am going to do my PhD in quantum computing. People said that uh, you have taken a wrong decision in your life because nobody knew what was quantum computing, uh, learn quantum computing. And even my research guide, who was my, after God, I respect my research guide very much because he was the only person who said, Arish, I don't know what is quantum computing, but I can do all support from my side. And I was self-learning. It took me five years to learn quantum computing. I'm telling this history because uh, when my father was in my age, he never thought we are going to use something like laptop now. 
So like 20 years back or 30 years back when someone uh, said to my father that we are going to use a, an instrument which is very small and compact. When you type something, the instrument uh, brings the whole world to you. Now even chat GPT will answer any questions you ask. One day I asked chat GPT, I want, uh, my, my weight is uh, uh, 79, I want to reduce my weight to 70, give me a diet plan and a workout plan. And chat GPT was giving me a 5 day workout plan and diet plan so that I will reduce my weight in another 3 months. So if someone said that this would have uh, happened uh, uh, like 30 years back, if someone told my father that, your son is going to ask a computer how to reduce his weight, he would have never believed it. The same thing, I believe that quantum computer is going to change the world after 30 years and it was a risk. Doing a PhD in quantum computing 10 years back was a risk for me. Luckily, uh, negatively nothing happened anyway. So in 2012, quantum computing was in a state of a calculator. So the maximum we could do using a quantum computing uh, in 2012 was we can add some numbers, we can implement very simple NOT gate AND gate, simple gates. But now it is capable of solving some commercial business problems. So I am working in PwC, I am solving business problems using quantum computers. Uh, excellent. Can I have a slide later? This is the image of the first computer. Do you know the size of this? This is of a 30 cross 50 feet room, which is bigger than this space. So it's like this, all the first ever computer. Okay. It's not going back. Can it go back? Oh. So the first computer, the size of the first computer is like the size of this room. And it was using like around 17,000 vacuum tubes. It is made up of 17,000 vacuum tubes, 70,000 resistors, 10,000 capacitors. More than two to three people were working on one computer. Now, a laptop which I can use, even my kid is using a laptop. Even my son, who is less than one year old, he knows how to use my mobile phone. But the first computer was very difficult to operate and the maximum, the capacity of this computer is to add 5000 numbers in one second. It was used in uh, World War to calculate firing tables. Firing tables is a military application where they used to calculate uh, how to fire uh, military targets. So things changed a lot. From vacuum tubes, we got transistors. And this computer science people knows very well, right? Computer science, how many computer science people here? Uh, I, I like my session to be interactive. Okay, uh, like more than half of the population is computer science population. So they, okay, online or physics population. So computer science people know that the first generation computer was made up of vacuum tubes. The second generation computer is made up of transistors. Then came ICs. And now we are using our laptops, which the integral part of our laptops are uh, microprocessing chips, or we call it as processors, Intel processor, AMD processor. So this is how a computer started evolving, normal computer. So the, the, this is a person, this is a clip art of uh, a great person called Gordon Moore. Anybody heard of this name? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Gordon Moore is the co-founder of Intel organization. So he was watching his organization, how they are making the processors. And every 18 months, approximately every two years, the number of transistors in a computer, in a processing uh, processor got doubled because we need 
faster calculations. We have to do things faster. If you remember, how many of you played computer games in your childhood? Okay, there is one hand. I think that is a 90s kid's hand. 80s kids. Okay, 90s kids. I'm an 80s kid. I was, uh, I was born in 18, 1988. So if you remember, uh, maybe uh, I used to go to a uh, shop where I pay one rupee and I used to play computer, not computer game, it was a, a chip attached to a TV. I used to play in TV. For 5 to 10 minutes, I have to pay 1 rupee. So, the graphics was very bad at that time. Now, people are using so advanced graphics. I can see a real person like... Uh, I, I thought once my, my cousin was playing, my cousin's child was playing a computer game. I thought there are two people fighting uh, in real, but they said it's an animation. We couldn't differentiate animation with uh, reality now. So, the graphics have advanced so much that it's very difficult to differentiate graphics with the uh, reality because because of the improvement in the processing power we are unable to differentiate reality versus graphics but in, in 1990s it is very easy to say that it's a graphical game that improvement is because of increase in transistors in the processes because yeah, like more graphics means more mathematics. So more mathematics is possible if there are more operations in one second. So if a computer can do more mathematics in one second, then it will become more efficient like playing 3D games, all those things. So he was watching for making computer efficient, his company is adding twice the number of transistors every 18 months. But it is not happening after some decades. So, because if you have to add more number of transistors in a processor, either your transistor size should increase, sorry, either your processor size should increase or transistor size should, should decrease. Either I should make this hall bigger to keep more people inside it or I should reduce the size like honey I shrink the kid movie. I have to reduce your size so that I can add more people here. Okay. So it is not possible to increase the size of the processor to an extent because then our laptops will become bigger. It won't be laptops, we can't carry them. So there is a limit for increasing the size of the processor. For decreasing the size of the transistor, still I have a limit. Because in the latest nine uh, in May 2021. The smallest transistor manufactured is of size 2 nanometers. Nanometers is 10 to the power minus 9 meter, which is nearly, sir, uh, our microbiologist sir knows, <laughs> Pro Vice Chancellor sir, it's nearly the size of a DNA sir, which is microscopic. <laughs> so, if you still want to double the number of transistors in the processor, you have to reduce the size to atom level which is more smaller, atomic level. So, let us see how it, the performance increased. So, in 1970s, there were around 2200 transistors in an IC, which was running in a 740 kilohertz speed. So, in one second, how many operations can be done? Now, in 2021, we are able to achieve around 3 gigahertz. Even in 2023, we couldn't cross 3 gigahertz, 3 point some gigahertz. So, we have achieved 1000 times smaller transistors, 3500 times faster computers in the past 50 years. So, it is a very drastic exponential increase in speed, but that is not going to happen in future. After 50 years, we won't be able to achieve the same 3500 times faster because the th transistors cannot be made smaller than atom because we studied in physics and chemistry also. The smallest possible unit is atom. My, I remember my uh, class 6th standard teacher teaching me, uh, inter she was introducing me what is an atom. She took a chalk piece, she said I am going to break this chalk piece. Okay. So, she was breaking it into powder and she asked me like, 
uh, is it possible for me to break it further? We didn't know. So she said, after breaking it to the smallest unit, you will get an atom. And she said, you cannot break it any further. An atom, which is uh, made up of subatomic particles like electrons, protons, neutrons. So that is the smallest. So I cannot make any smaller. The transistor won't become any smaller. So the reduction of size is not possible. So increase in the efficiency is not possible with a present style of computing. Our present style of computing is not going to help us for another 50 years. Okay. Shall we stop our efficiency here? Should we stop our efficiency here? All right, because we still need more computing power. As our pro vice chancellor sir said, we have many problems like curing cancer, we have to do DNA sequencing, drug discovery. So do you, do you, do you think how, how long will it take to discover a new medicine for a rare disease? Any guesses? Any guesses? Well, guess. There is no correct answer for this. One year? One year? Okay. More than 10 years? Depends on the disease. Depends on the disease? Okay. Let, let's assume that nobody knows anything about the disease except they found that there is a protein which causes the disease. So we have to... See, medicine is nothing but some... some Drug discovery is happening, right? They will pick a protein which is causing the disease and they will let the protein interact with the, some molecule so that because of the reactivity, the disease disappears or gets cured. But we have millions of molecules. From the millions of molecules, we have to find one molecule. You know, metformin, sir, sir. Metformin is something which is used for diabetes. So to find that metformin is doing, going to do something for diabetes, it took many years. To find a molecule will interact properly or not, we cannot test molecule with human being, then let's say I have to test 10, 1 million molecule. 1 million means 10 lakh. So I have to give 10 lakh people the molecule and we don't know which molecule will make them survive and which will make them which will kill them. So I cannot risk 10 lakh lives for finding a medicine or 10 lakh animals to finding a medicine. So, so before giving the medicine to a person or an animal, there is something called in silico, in silico approach, where people used to give the drug a treatment in computer. They take computer and they simulate if that molecule can react with the protein. So I have 10 lakh molecules. To, let's assume that I want to check one molecule in one second. So what is 10 lakh seconds? Let me, let me just do a calculation. If you have your mobile phones, you can take calculator. We'll do 10 lakh seconds. 10 lakh seconds divided by 60 means 16,000 minutes, which by 60 gives me 277 hours which divided by 24 means 11 days if it happens for one second one molecule but, but we cannot process one molecule in one second one molecule takes few days to process so it will take years to find a drug but what if something like corona comes and we take another 10 years to find a drug all will be extinct by the time we find a drug everyone will be dead so, our future generation needs more faster computing, which is the, but, but in reality, the present computer will not satisfy our future generation's speed. So, we need a paradigm shift, which means we cannot go something like this, like this laptop or silicon computing is not enough for us. That paradigm shift, which we are trying, can you please go to the next one? And that paradigm shift, there are many different paradigm shifts tried and one of the paradigm shift which is giving promising results is quantum computing. So, quantum computers, let me try this. So, quantum computers are something 
Okay, it's a device that uses quantum mechanical effects to accelerate calculations. In another two weeks, in the next two weeks, uh, in most of the sessions, you will be knowing what is exactly quantum mechanical effects because we have many quantum mechanical phenomena. In I don't want to uh, like we have to just 20, 15 to 20 minutes in this keynote session, so I cannot take physics or mathematics class in this 20 uh, minutes. But there are very interesting sessions planned in this uh, two-week workshop where you will get to uh, know what are these quantum uh, mechanical effects and how these calculations are going to happen. So there are two major approaches. These two major computing are very famous in quantum uh, phenomena. One is annealing approach, another, another is gate motor. So I'll be focusing on annealing approach in my sessions. We work in annealing approach. In business cases, annealing approaches are giving promising results. Gate model are expected to give good results, hopefully in another 5 to 10 years. Definitely, people are scaling the quantum computers. So presently, gate models are not being used in big business cases, use cases. So it is hoped to solve business cases in another 5 to 10 years. So this is how a gate model quantum computer will look like. I think uh, you must have googled it. You can simply google and you can see a computer like this. And this is an annealing computer. You can, you can see a box there, right? That box is 10 cross 10 size quantum computer. Inside the box a small chip is there. The chip is placed and that chip does the magic now. And there is a survey by Hyperion uh, uh, company. Around They surveyed around 300 quantum computing related companies and they said 51 percentage of the companies wanted to solve financial problems using quantum and 47 using logistics and around 36 people using quantum computing for scheduling problems. Logistics, we can use logistics uh, based use cases like shipping containers, how to optimize Shipping the containers. Shipping containers means shipping doesn't mean ship. It's moving containers. For example, let's say there is an air cargo company which ships cargo from India to USA. If they randomly place all the containers or boxes inside the airplane, they might not be able to save the space. They have because sending an airplane is a costly task. They have to spend lots and lots of money. So they have to optimize so that they have to maximize the number of containers being packed in an aeroplane. So it's an optimization problem being solved by quantum computer efficiently. Vehicle routing. Vehicle routing is something like our Google Maps. Our Google Maps does gives us best routing. But in business case, vehicle routing is something more complicated. So let's say I'm running a, a KFC or McD kind of shop. Let's assume that I am the owner of KFC. So I have around 40 shops in Chennai and I want my KFC units to distribute food to different places or I have to send uh, raw materials to different KFC units. I want to optimize this sending. I cannot spend more money on petrol or more time. I have to save my time as well as petrol. So it's an optimization problem. Quantum computing is capable of solving optimization problem like that. In pharma, protein folding, like I said, drug discovery is being solved by uh, quantum computer. There, there is a special area called the molecular talking in drug discovery. So before uh, starting uh, to find a drug, we have to test if docking is happening. Docking means if a molecule can fit inside a protein. If it fits only, then we can find if it is curing, before curing, the molecule should go and sit inside the protein. It, it's not so easy. So you, you have 10 lakh, 20 lakh molecules. Out of 20 lakh, only 1000 molecule will be going and sitting inside a protein. And from that 1000, only few tens of proteins, uh, molecules will be able to cure the disease. So that's a very difficult task, optimization task. But now quantum computer have solved that task. And in finance, optimizing portfolio, how many of you invest in stocks, trades, all those things? Okay, very few. So finding the best stock and how much should I invest for stock, 
how much should I send it to my FD, how much should I spend for buying gold, how much should I spend for buying land. This is called optimizing my finance portfolio. Uh, it is possible to do that using quantum computers, marketing campaigns, all those things are possible using quantum computers. I'll, I'll show, I, 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 like whenever I say something that quantum computers has done this, I want to give the proof also. There is a company called Savantex which have used quantum computers in port of Los Angeles and they were able to save more than like 60 percentage more cargo handle each day per crane. So what happens in uh, uh, cargo handling is there are cranes, those cranes will lift the containers and load it in ships. I live near uh, the port, my home is near the Chennai port. So I have seen cranes lifting and uh, placing in ships. So this is not an easy task because you have hundreds of containers, thousands of containers and, and being handled every month. So the crane should be optimally operated. You cannot randomly pick some container and place it in ship. ship. So you need to optimally pick the container. So this quantum solution made by the company called 7th X has improved 60 percentage in the placements and 12 percentage reduction in turnaround time. It is an achievement. So 90 percentage of decrease in time for hedging. There is a company in Spain called Caxa Bank. They use quantum computer last year and they were able to improve their efficiency in hedging. Hedging means a bank wants to do business. It's, hedging is something like the finance people know about hedging. So how much should I uh, get from uh, like RBA kind of banks, how much should I uh, buy, how much debt should I buy, that is hedging. And there is a company called Patterson Food Group like KFC or McD. This is a grocery chain, not KFC, you can say something like uh, Reliance, uh, Geomark kind of thing. So they have used quantum computers to solve their uh, Roasting. Roasting is something like preparing timetable for university. You know, uh, like how long it... I, I worked as a professor for three years. We have a special committee for timetable. In our department, we had around 50 professors in computer science department. There is a special committee. Four to five members will sit and they will frame the timetable and it takes more than five days to create a timetable. During their vacation, the timetable committee spends more than a week in timetable preparation alone. Even after preparing that timetable, some faculty will say that there is a class in my time. You know, such a headache for a 50 member department. So, Patterson Group is like a Geomart kind of chain in a city. They have to assign which person should go on which day to which local locality. So they think they, they used to take 25 hours, they used to spend 25 hours in doing this scheduling but because of quantum computer, the scheduling has become less than 22 minutes. So they have reduced 80 percentage of manual roastering effects. These are just three examples, real time examples. You can visit this website and you can see more than, uh, more number of examples like Davidson is a company which is working on missile defense optimization. Unisys, they use optim quantum optimizer for packing air cargo. Volkswagen, you know Volkswagen, very famous car brand. They use quantum computing to reduce their waste in manufacturing. They manufacture cars. They use quantum computing and they have reduced some 16 to 20 percentage of wastage car manufacturing. And more use cases are there using quantum computer. In 2012, I was, uh, when I started my PhD, I used to mail the, there is a company called D-Wave, you can see the website there. So the D-Wave is the only company who had quantum computer in 2012. In, around the globe, the one and only company was D-Wave. So every month I used to send a mail to get their access. I will never, I never got a reply from them. I never got a reply. After five years of completing PhD, I never got a chance to use their uh, D-Wave cloud system. But that D-Wave is giving cloud access to every single person in the globe now. It is 
they, they have like 20 minutes of free usage for this cloud and I want you all to use this D-Wave cloud access. So in one of my sessions, we will create an account in this D-Wave and every one of you will be writing a code and you will be submitting in the D-Wave's computer. So you are going to work on a real quantum computer. So uh, the current state of quantum, it can solve problems, limited number of qubits are there, scalability is a bit difficult right now, but it's happening. Because in 2012, we were able to solve few uh, addition, subtraction, gate operations. But now you saw the use cases, right? So we are able to solve many real world use cases now. So I hope in another 10 or 20 years, my son or my grandson is going to use this quantum computer as a laptop. This is going to happen, definitely. Because my father never used a laptop. I used my first computer when I entered my BCA. I didn't even know how to switch on a computer. My BCA first lab session, I was sitting idly, my professor came, what are you doing? I asked him how to switch on a computer. I studied computer in uh, school. From class 8 I was studying computer. But uh, in our lab always the computer will be on. So we used to go sit there, we used to type, uh, the language which I studied in my school was GW Basic. There is a language, computer language called Basic. How many of uh, the computer science students know that there is a language basic. Good to see that. COBOL, basic. I have done programming in COBOL, basic, all those things because I am an 80s kid. Pascal, Fortran. I have done coding in all those languages because it, I was doing my uh, BCA in 2006. So 2000. Huh? Fortran still exists. True, sir. To. Banking. Yeah, banking is being used, yeah. but job market in Fortran is limited, sir. Uh, there, is, there are some companies who teach us Fortran and they recruit the people, but that person cannot leave their job. He won't have uh, any future. But Fortran is being used in uh, majorly banking sector. Yeah. Uh, IP mainframe. The mainframe. Fortran. Yes. So, uh, <coughs> the same, the same, uh, like in 2006, there were laptops, but not so. Uh, like in 1990s, if someone is having a PC in his home, he is one of the richest person in the area. In in my locality, I could, in my uh, neighborhood, I, was, I remember only one person had a PC in 90s. So the same way right now, buying a quantum computer is a dream. No one can buy a quantum computer because it's a 10 cross 10 feet size. You, you need a 10 cross 10 room to keep your quantum computer and it will cost crores of rupees. It's not so simple. It is crores of rupees a quantum computer. But I hope in another 20 years or 30 years, quantum computer will become a very smaller device which my grandson can use. To make that happen faster, we need more workforce to work in quantum computer. So, if people are not aware of quantum computing, then the development in the area won't happen. So, I am here, I, want, I, I wanted to go to colleges and speak about quantum computer because I want more people to be aware of quantum computer, I want more people to do research in it because one or two scientists are not enough for the world. You need thousands of scientists, more than thousands of scientists. So, if we all work together, we all take the society towards progress, then our children or our grandchildren can solve complex, complex problems like finding medicine for complicated diseases and all. They can do it easily and they can be happier. Because, as Sirs rightly said, we should ethically use all the technology being given to us. And we will learn both ethics as well as technology. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you all. Providing the opportunity to conduct this FTP in this premises. And next I thank our advisor and uh, vice chancellor. And ProVC has given a more insight about content computing. Thank you, sir. And next I thank our below register. Always he will uh, give a nice insight about the unique workshops. And next I thank our convener, Dr. Sanulapam and Asha Banumam HOD. They are given the opportunity to connect the FDP in this uh,
Uh, next, I thank all our coordinators and faculty members uh, and non-teaching faculties. Um, I, uh, we look forward to the upcoming days of the FTP with a renewed commitment to explore, discover and learn for the world of knowledge is as vast as the universe itself. Thank you all for your active participation and engagement.